What up, it's me. Last time I made a video debunking Ted Ed's embarrassing hit piece on immortality. I think I did a decent job and the video was well received, comparatively speaking. <laughs> now, at the end there I have mentioned that because science also has an anti-immortality video and one of my viewers has suggested making a response, props to soothing scientists. I told them I will think about it. And you will never guess what I have decided. This time I will be responding to two videos though. Their total duration is seven times higher than the Ted Ed's, so I will try to be concise. Video number one. This is why you don't want the power of immortality. First of all, I don't hate this one as much as Ted Ed's. It actually has educational value instead of containing nothing but fucking bullshit. To me, the biggest issue it has is the title. Such a bold assertion must have some strong arguments behind it, doesn't it? Let's see if it does. First 9 minutes we're skipping because there's no criticism, it's just Kyle explaining biological immortality and its limitations. At this point it's a pretty good video, it's very informative and I like that he actually defines his terms. But then, after saying this at the start, for this analysis, we are going to instead focus on the most realistic version of immortality, biological immortality. And after spending 9 minutes explaining the thing, he basically says, fuck it, and proceeds to criticize true immortality instead. Now we have true, complete immortality. Weird, but okay. Let's look at the points then. The first one he makes is the good old, but your loved ones will die. The biggest criticism that you'll hear is that if you are completely immortal, you will have to bear witness to every single person that you know, love, or care about passing away. You can always make new friends, you could even make a new family over time, but the idea of not being able to even share the supposed fruits of immortality is hard to accept. First of all, your loved ones die even in normal life, so it's not really a problem with immortality, it's a problem with death. It fucking sucks. But after that, wouldn't living a much longer life make it easier to stop others from dying? Even if you are the only immortal one, laws of the universe don't exactly prevent you from contributing to life extension research. Uh. Second point Kyle makes is limited memory capacity and forgetting stuff. And would there be a point to doing and seeing potentially everything if you're going to forget a lot of it? Yes, there would be a point. Memories are not the main reason why we do things. They only serve as a way to keep track of our experiences. We can look back at them and feel a certain way, of course, but that's just an added bonus. The point is, is that your brain prioritizes some information and remembers it and deletes other information or forgets it. If one of the supposed benefits of immortality, complete immortality, is accumulating all the life experience that you couldn't get in just one normal human lifetime, then this is not evolved to deal with unlimited experience if there is some finite amount that you can remember and then therefore you have to forget everything else. The solution here is twofold. You can either enhance your memory with neural implants or other bodily modifications, or you can try to only learn things you would actually use, since your brain only deletes useless shit. His third point is about getting sick. Magical complete immortality has huge quality of life problems too. For example, if you are living forever, your chances of contracting an incurable illness and being sick forever is 100%. Now, I'm not saying that people can't live while sick, but if you knew this was going to happen if you became immortal, would you choose to become immortal? The thing is, your typical incurable illness is only incurable until it becomes curable. And if you live with it without dying because magic, with every day you become closer to being cured after yet another breakthrough in medical science. So yes, I would choose to become immortal even if I would occasionally go down with a sickness. <coughs> Kyle's fourth point is boredom. Yale philosopher Shelley Kagan argues in his book Death that immortality would also lead to extreme 
boredom. An infinite life necessarily exhausts all potential experience well before that life is over, leading to extreme boredom. First of all, let's not forget that infinite life is impossible in the real world because infinity is a made-up mathematical concept. Kyle even contradicts himself while talking about it. An infinite life, that life is over. Infinite over. Which helps demonstrate its inapplicability. So, with that in mind, projecting something like experience into infinity and then applying that to real life is hardly useful. But, okay, let's look at infinite life regardless. Even if we assume that there is a finite amount of things you can experience before you run out of shit to do, the question then becomes, how long of a life do you have to live before that actually happens? And will you even care? We don't know the answer to those two questions. We don't even know what our lives will be like in a hundred years, much less in 9000, or in however long it takes you to experience everything in the entire universe. Will boredom still be a thing then? I don't know. And neither does Kyle or Shaley Kagan. But you know what? There actually is a mechanism of getting around this exhaustion problem. It is something that we are all born with. And Kyle mentions it himself. And if you forget because of our brains or some magical reason so much of that life that you are never bored, what was the point of even having that experience in the first place? The point of having an experience is experiencing it in the moment. Memory is pretty much a side effect. Tell me, what is the point of doing something pleasurable if you might forget it one day? Because it felt good. You know how sometimes people want to forget something to experience it anew once more? Or how we desperately want to forget spoilers we accidentally saw on the internet? Memory is not as important as Kyle makes it out to be. But if you have a very important memory you care about a lot, you probably won't forget it anyway because of how brains work. Now back to Shelley Kagan. In Kagan's view, death is actually a rescue from the unbearable tedium of immortality. The thing is, I have found this book online and read the chapter dedicated to immortality. Unfortunately, Kagan's belief that immortality would be boring is based on arguments from ignorance. He can't imagine what he would do with his eternal life, and thus he thinks it would inevitably become boring. But what if I say I can imagine that? Do we cancel each other out? No, because imagination is irrelevant. I'm not saying infinite life would never become boring either. There's always a middle ground many people avoid for no reason, called I don't know. But hey, there's an even bigger hole in their reasoning. I don't understand how you can get from just calling endless life boring to then equating it to a hellish nightmare and saying it's literally worse than death. There is no justification for this either in the book or in the video. We have all experienced boredom. Some of us have even experienced horrible pain or nightmares to compare with it. But not a single one of us has ever been dead. I don't even need to pull out my any life is better than death card. Boring, worse than death. Boring, worse than death. Can't connect. Access denied. But then again, even though Kyle is basing some of his arguments on Kagan's, Kagan himself is clearly just speculating without making any bold assertions about what we want unlike a certain someone. At the end of his chapter, Kagan even says this. So the best form of life would not involve immortality. He means true or complete immortality. That, I think, would not be at all desirable. But neither is the best form of life what we have now, where you die after a measly 50 or 80 or 100 years. Rather, the best thing, I suppose, would be to be able to live as long as you wanted. In other words, Kagan is in favor of immortality, 
but only if he had control over his own death. And this is basically what life extension supporters want to achieve. We want the right to decide when our own lives should end, instead of being at the mercy of factors we cannot control. Okay, let's finish the rest of this video. Or just like, what if you fell into an abandoned mineshaft? Just climb out, you invincible fuck. Or an unbearable, uncaring void, and you were stuck there for literally ever until the end of time, and you just had to sit there all cramped. Well, you're shit out of luck. Take a long nap, dream of something good, or use whatever magic that keeps you from dying to get out. Well, if you had a more realistic version of immortality, you wouldn't be truly immortal, and you'd be bound to die in some unlikely and very unpleasant way. Just like normal people die every day. But we still want to live. Curious. And even if you were truly magically invulnerable and immortal, you'd have to deal with bigger philosophical and existential problems like losing all of your loved ones and your friends and your family and your memories and your connections to society and probably your will to live. Except you didn't prove any of those would have a big enough impact to consider dying instead, which is the entire point of your video, according to the title. Mortality might be in and of itself a superpower from the point of view of an immortal person. No, it's not. For an immortal person, it would probably seem absurd that we die because our own bodies betray us. Death may be what makes us feel alive. Very deep, Kyle, but no, it's not. Good thing you included that maybe for plausible deniability, because I almost thought your body was hijacked by an edgy 12 year old. That one is finally over. I hope you can see happiness on my face. Now let's look at Kyle's arguments in his follow-up video. And this time I said, you do not want to live forever. You do not want immortality. And I seem to have struck some kind of fictional nerve here, saying that you do not want biological immortality or otherwise. No, you didn't say that, Kyle. You have only pointed out limitations of biological immortality. But your actual criticism was focused on true immortality. On a side note, if Kyle had actually said we don't even want biological immortality, that would have put him against Shelly Kagan, whose arguments Kyle used, because that guy wants something even stronger than measly non-aging. Next. So what I think most people, when they think about immortality, are forgetting is that it does not come along with other superpowers if we're just evaluating immortality. You're not a god, you're not omniscient, you're not invulnerable. Well, you don't have to be a god, but if you literally cannot die, it does imply some sort of invincibility. Without it, you cease to exist as soon as your brain is sufficiently damaged or destroyed. A lot of you point out that you want to live to the end of the universe and see everything happen. Yes, that would be cool, but you could also just end up being at the exact same place you are in life and just working a million dead-end jobs. Life doesn't owe you ultimate success and wealth and happiness, and therefore having an infinite amount of life doesn't guarantee you uh, that that will happen. So you could just have a very long, very boring, or very bad life too. Wait a second, but having an infinite life actually does guarantee you success. Remember when he said, on a long enough timeline, the survival rate of everyone drops to zero when talking about unlikely causes of death? What do you think is more likely? Getting fatally struck by lightning? Or achieving success in life with a never-aging body and the ability to become progressively more skillful, knowledgeable, wealthy and socially integrated without fearing that it will all go to shit in roughly 80 years. You think I'd hesitate with that answer? You got me fucked up, son. Yes, life doesn't owe you success. And it doesn't owe you failure either. But hey, screw infinite life. Let's just look at biological immortality. We still have a person who lives with a body not affected by age-related diseases, which are like most of them, and who will inevitably become more competent at stuff by the year just because they live in a society. An average person is expected to achieve something in life in less than 50 years, and it's still possible.
If we give our immortal person not 9,000 years from Kyle's favorite estimate, but only 500, that's still 10 times the normal amount. If they don't achieve anything in that time, they must be a fucking idiot, or they're not even trying. Next. Because we have no data uh, on what immortality is like either way, both of those possibilities right now are equally likely in my mind. But we do have data about normal life, and since immortality is basically just normal life, but with old age replaced by indefinite young adulthood, we can make predictions based on what we already know. Also, in my mind, your mind is wrong. Next. Now there is a popular video in this space that some of you have pointed out to me by CPG Grey who says, no, we should defeat death. It will be better. Just because death is natural doesn't mean it's good. And I agree with you, Mr. Gray. Uh, that would be a naturalistic fallacy, assuming something is good just because it's natural. Just because something is a natural supplement doesn't mean that it works, doesn't mean that it's good. But because, like I said, we have no data on what immortality would be either way, it's also a naturalistic fallacy to just assume that never dying would be naturally better, if that makes sense. No, it doesn't make sense because there is no appeal to nature. And nobody assumes that never dying would be better. We conclude that after taking into account all the reasons why death is so undesirable. CGP Grey and Kurzgesagt collaborating on the topic of death and aging is one of the best things that ever happened on YouTube. Maybe you should have actually watched their videos and properly considered the arguments they are making instead of doubling down. I believe that all science YouTubers should be more like this. Death is a part of life, he whispers. Death gives life meaning. This is madness. Misery doesn't give happiness meaning. Happiness is meaning itself. If you tortured people to make them better appreciate the pleasures of life, you would be a monster, just like this guy. And less like this. Death may be what makes us feel alive. Next. But what I'm saying is that if you evaluate immortality alone, without any other things, which is useless and is also not what you're doing. Next. We cannot assume that technology will always keep pace with immortality, that we will cure every disease, that we'll make everything perfectly safe in the world and in the universe. Then you can still get sick, you can still have a terrible time of things, you can still get bored. These things to me are still equally likely uh, to happen to you in the average lifetime. You're not suddenly a god. Kyle. You're saying we are better off dying than living forever because we might get sick sometimes? Or we might get bored occasionally? Or we might even have some bad experiences once in a while? That's fucking weak. Next. And some of you were pointing out that maybe uh, all your friends and family could become immortal too if this happens. Okay, but pop culture wise, what are we really looking at here? Average immortality power. You just get it. Highlander style. You get it. You don't get to pass it along to everyone. When the Flash gets the speed force, he doesn't just like get to hand it to anyone that he wants and then they're all in the speed force now and you all can live forever and travel back in time. That's not what we're talking about here. Fuck pop culture. Real life is not a comic book. It does not submit to plot convenience. Also, you have talked about biological mortality before. Do you really think replicating it for another person is comparable to replicating the ability to move with the speed of light? Spoiler, there's no fucking way. Next. It is easy to imagine ourselves as some kind of highlanders of the galaxy, wandering Earth for thousands of years until technology takes us to the furthest stars in the cosmos and we colonize everything and we see everything and we're the last human at the end of time. However, it is just as easy to imagine you living an average life forever and nothing being great and you never making it to the stars because you're just the average Joe. You don't accumulate unlimited wealth. You don't accumulate unlimited knowledge and you're not on the first trip to Mars or the first trip to Andromeda or whatever. Those things are just as likely too. Based on what, Kyle? Your imagination? What can be asserted without evidence can also be dismissed without evidence. Next. Just because you have unlimited time to do something doesn't mean that you are necessarily going to do that thing. There could be things that you just cannot manage to do. But it surely raises the odds, doesn't it, Kyle? 
So just to highlight some legitimate counter arguments to what I think uh, a lot of you are saying. Nah, if your counter arguments are legitimate, Ben Shapiro is a basketball player. Another comment comes from Stormageddon, Dark Lord of All, and Mr. Funk is 420, sick, and Travis Storm, uh, Hammer Steel, the Asylum Cat, and others who say, I want to see how the entire universe plays out from now until the maybe heat death of the universe. I want to see it all, I want to do it all, and I get that with biological immortality. No, they're not saying they would get that with biological immortality. They're not stupid, Kyle. Mr. Fungus420 even mentions magical cannot die immortality, probably to forestall a response like this. You could just get hit by a bus. Oh wait, you did it anyway. Next. I think pop culture has actually conflated the two powers, where if you're immortal, you assume that you're invulnerable to death at all. But what we were evaluating was biological immortality. No, you were not. You only explained it. But remember what you started criticizing afterwards? Now we have true, complete immortality. That's right. So it's not fair to blame pop culture for mixing things up and then do the exact same thing. Next. It's 100% likely that one of these unlikely ways to die is going to end your life if it's not aging. Maybe, but I would argue you're much more likely to kill yourself from all the pessimism Kyle is pouring onto you here than to fall off a ladder in a spaceship with no gravity. You're gonna get killed by a coconut before you explore Mars, probably. Or probably not. Who knows? Certainly not Kyle from Because Science who likes to assert shit based on wild guesses. Next. You'd see your loved ones die. No, they'd be immortal too. Lifespan is for everyone, not only for me. Why? It's weird how people just assert stuff without evidence sometimes, isn't it, Kyle? What Requiem for Pain probably meant is, if humanity reaches biological immortality, there would be no reason to not give it to everyone. So if you are immortal, chances are people close to you are immortal too. Next. If we really need to expand our brain capacity, we can do so with bionic implants, transhumanism. Okay, man, look. I don't know about all that, man. Look, I was just trying to evaluate the power just like in a vacuum here. Which would be completely useless because nothing ever happens in a vacuum. But you're not even doing that, Kyle. Kyle is looking at immortality in the context of real life, but he's also only cherry-picking the lowest hanging potential problems. And when someone points out obvious solutions to those problems, he's like, I don't know about all that, man. I just want to keep pretending immortality is terrible, not admit I was wrong. How convenient. Next. But what is the point of experiencing the same things forever? The point is not losing your sentience. If you're still alive, that is all that really matters. Is it though? Is living living if you're not living well? Eh? Yes, living is living. Uh, you'll be bored. Absolutely not. False. Even if this was the case, the most boring life is still better than not experiencing life at all. Is it? Yes, boredom is better than death. Boredom is temporary and can occur alongside positive feelings. But death, as we understand it, is permanent and leaves room for nothing. There are plenty of things much worse than boredom, and I would still prefer them to dying. Next. Perception. Both self-perception and surroundings perception is a miracle that happens one single time. If you die, you're done for good. Not only losing your future and your present, but also your past. You lose yourself forever, as if you've never really been born, never really existed in the first place. I cannot think of anything worse, more useless and stupid. If you die, everything vanishes. And I agree. Requiem for Pain expressed healthy contempt towards death. Please note, there isn't a single exclamation point or unnecessary caps, but Kyle is being overly dramatic, making it look like the commenter was aggressive. He even gives them this. Oh, ho, ho, ho! Hey, man! Wow! Hell, he even found something to laugh at in the middle of that paragraph. You lose yourself forever! Kyle, if your counter-arguments are strong and legitimate, making your opponent look worse isn't needed to come out on top. Okay, let's get to the bigger point. I mean, yes, if you die, you stop. But as far from you not mattering to any part of the past or the future, even if you leave uh, this plane, I mean, that's objectively not true. I mean, it doesn't matter to you, maybe. What you do in life, Echoes in eternity. Yes, it does, Kyle. Thanks for delaying human progress towards life extension. What a good way to spoil your otherwise great record. 
Anyway, a Requiem for Pain was obviously exaggerating, but it's not far from the truth. You can only experience the universe by living in it. So if you die, it's as good as non-existent to you, because you don't exist to witness anything. You can say the leaving no impact part is wrong, and I would agree with you, even though to me that impact would seem pointless because there is no pride or regret without existence. But that's it, you can't argue Requiem for Pain is objectively wrong, since you will never get past the problem of solipsism. On a side note, Hanselite, you're a fucking champion. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can please pause the video and read this beautiful comment. Even Kyle had to agree here. Moving on. But I'm a millennial, so I have a lust for death. I'm a millennial too, and I have a lust for life. Weird. Kyle, if this one and that I'm one... I'm tired of living right now. ...are not just edgy jokes and you are genuinely suicidal, please get some help, okay? Also, is this why you're so desperate to shit on immortality? Because you want to die? Then Kyle describes how he would jump into his grave from a helicopter. One step grave. Ah! Whew, it's a millennial's dream. It sounds epic and all, but I think he would never actually do it. Self-preservation instinct is the best anti-edgelord mechanism built by nature. Next we have a great comment by James Wundcannon and that's pretty much it. You might be wondering, Daniel, why make this response? Is it really a big deal? Yes it is. Using Mr. Gray's words... And how soon we start the project of focusing our attention and shaping our tools against the Reaper matters. For the difference of but a day might determine what side of the future chasm you find yourself on, journeying forever forward or falling backward into the abyss. Which is why I felt responsible to help minimize the damage done by Because Science with those videos. I want as many people as possible to find themselves on the right side of the chasm, especially myself. Also, don't get me wrong, I don't think that Because Science is a bad channel or that Kyle is a bad person. They create lots of entertaining educational content for people all the time. And some people don't like to think about their lives in super long term. I'd say most of them don't. Maybe Kyle is one of them. Maybe he has other things to think about. Those are shitty excuses, I know. But everybody makes mistakes. We must remain vigilant for both ourselves and those unaware. Let me leave you with a little something to think about. In modern civilized world, you are required to give informed consent for things like medical procedures, social science research and sex. You have to be aware what will happen to you and what consequences will come along with that. But when we are talking about death, something that, as we understand it, will end your entire existence, we require no such thing and instead just accept it. Why? Please make sure you have watched CGP Grey's video. I'll put a link in the description just in case. Best of luck with your efforts. Video number one. This time I will respond to two videos though. First of all, your loved ones die even in normal life. So it's not really a problem with death, it's a problem... Fuck my ass. <laughs> First of all, you're not... You're a piece of shit. First of all, even if you are the... Even if you are the only... Im even if you're the only immortal one, laws of the universe don't exactly prevent you from contributing. We can we can look back. Memories are memories are not the main memories are not. So with we don't even know what our lives will be like in. We don't even. But, but, if you have a memory, but, but not a single one, one, blad, except you didn't prove any of those would have a big enough impact to consider dying instead, which is the entire point of this video considering my dick. Your body was hijacked by an... 
Very deep, Kyle. Very deep, Kyle. But no, it's not. Good thing you included that. Very deep, Kyle. Because that guy wants something even stronger than biological. If Kyle had actually said we don't even want biological mortality, that would have. On a side note, if Kyle had actually said we don't even want. On a side note, if Kyle had actually said we don't even want. Won't. Want. 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 And the ability to become more. Blyat hui ropa. What do you think is more? What do you think is more likely? Getting fatally struck by lightning, without fearing that it will. You think I? You think I? You think? You think I'd hesitate with that answer? You got me fucked up, son. You got me fucked up, son. You got. And who will inevitably become more competent at stuff? by the year just because they live in mm -hmm. an average person is expected to achieve something in life in less than 50 50 <clears throat> but with old age replaced by indefinite young adulthood we can make prediction based <laughs> predictions suka cgp gray and kurzgesagt collaborating on the topic Fuck, I bit my tongue. Based on what, Kyle? Your imagination? B b b b b b based on what, Kyle? What can be asserted without evidence can also be... be based on what, Kyle? What can be asserted without evidence can be also dismissed. My dick. My dick can be dismissed without evidence. Um... And no, if you're... Eh... No, you were not. You only explained it. But remember what your story created career Or probably not. Who knows? Certainly not Kyle from Because Science who likes to assert shit based on wild gases. 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 Gas. 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 Gassy. Gases. I don't know about all that, man. I just want to keep pretending you're a little... I don't know about all that. And when someone keeps pretending, and when someone oppo I just wanna keep pretending mortality is terrible and not on it was boring, boring, boredom, boredom is temporary and boredom is temporary, but death, as we understand it, is permanent and leaves room bloom bloom boom. Yes, it does, Kyle. Yes, it does, Kyle. What a good way to spoil fuck my dick. But when we are talking about death, something that we... Uh, 